Today we're looking at Christian Darisaw. Good lineman name. Left tackle for Virginia Tech. Played early as a freshman in 2018. Got better every single year. I think he made a big jump in 2020 at the left tackle position. But interesting player. Length, athleticism. Uh, he's got some power to his game. There's some finishing questions with him. There's some questions with how he plays a set. But there might be some reasons for that. I'm not quite as high on him as when I did my first watch through of his film. But if you get this guy, you guys should be excited. Uh, I think this guy can be a franchise left tackle in the NFL. Pretty good one. Now, when I first watched Darisaw, these are the types of plays that got me really excited about him. Reach blocking two eyes, hinging, creating the seal for the back. Did this a lot in the Miami game. Um, just showcases like the functional athlete, his lateral movement skills, all that good stuff. But these are really nice movement skills for a big guy. I think he does a lot of this stuff because he plays in a very measured way. I weirdly think his coordination got better in his 2020 tape. And I'm not fully sure how. I, I, I would be very interested if I was a scout, like asking people within the Virginia Tech building, like, what changed exactly? Because players can get stronger a lot of times, and their coordination can improve, but his improved a lot and you'll see this with like a lot of like second level blocks and reach blocks and the positions that he puts himself in it's very interesting how like the Darisaw the functional athlete got better but part of the way that like Darisaw's built he's built like low to the ground even though he's 6'5 and so it feels like you're almost like looking at like an optical illusion based on how he moves and you'll see this in a lot of other plays it's just it's very interesting but in terms of performing certain movements i think this is actually like the build that you want i've heard it described as like low cut you're gonna need to be a really strong player and a good hand fighter if you want to play more down to center which you're probably not you're gonna want to try that outside arc um and maybe try to open up some counters but you got to be able to threaten that outside arc because if you don't the counters aren't really going to hit he plays it way too um he plays way too inside out, uh, and he can wash you down if he if he gets in those situations. This might be my favorite pass rep from him uh, that we're going to see. We're going to see a wide alignment. We're going to see the one-arm jab, looking to work back inside, possibly a long arm. And I like how immediate his anchor is. I like how he plays this set, um, how he's really even with it. Feet are good, mirror, and then outside leg anchors pretty easily and this isn't going to be like direct power but just like how he plays this set if this this play is going even longer he's going to be in a really good position all right so pass game in terms of like how he actually physically anchors roche is going to get into the chest here and he gets like a little initial blowback there saw very flexible in his lower half And so his anchor is going to be just fine here in terms of when he uses it. Um, Roche is like a smaller rusher, so he's not really going to push this as much as, as some other players might. But again, once he's got those outside shoulder pads, look what he does there. If you're flexible in your lower half, you can go from this position right here where it looks like the pad level is going up kind of absorbing this a bit and then anchoring from this spot this might be my favorite play from Darisaw in the run game where he's helping out at the first level using his body again and then finishing downfield key block on this long touchdown all right, so with Darisaw, the outside arc, I would say, is like his weak point. Some of it's physical. He doesn't have like ridiculous, ridiculous recovery traits um, in terms of like the overall foot quickness. And sometimes when he does engage with you um, and try to lock on or use his hands in certain ways, 
he can have a tendency to stop his feet, but it's also related to how he plays his set because a lot of this is a willingness on Darasaw's part. And I know that the back was a sign of protection, Blitz gonna come. Darasaw usually plays these reps the same way regardless of like back protection. Like he'll play like out of empty, he plays these sets pretty much the same way. Where he's flipping like right away. He's not trying to gain depth in stay more square. Which I think is an adjustment that he's going to have to do at the NFL level. Because it doesn't burn him a ton in terms of like actual sacks given up. or um, In college. Like his, his overall tape was good from like the production standpoint. But the problem with it is like. He plays you so inside out. That it can compromise the rest of his body. Because. In this position, yes, you're making the rusher rush that outside arc, but if that outside arm doesn't really stop him down, if you don't get a hold of your aiming point, rushers can work the outside arc. A lot of the inside, like if you're going to go like outside rush, then inside move, again, partially because of how he plays the set, but also because of the physical traits, he's better in those situations. Another detail here, I think he actually does pretty well in trash, and I know he's going to end up on the ground here. You slow this down a little bit. Uh, he's going to get collision from the back. Not from the back, but like literally from the back. Directionally. Um, a lot of bigger tackles would probably just fall right away here. I think he does a good job to kind of regain his balance overall. This is kind of like a strength and balance example. Bringing that outside leg through. Kind of giving a little bit of a last ditch effort to get something on that block. I like this play. I actually like this play a lot. Another example of his reactionary balance here. Dealing with some trash. A little bit of congestion in there. It's knocked a little bit off balance, but he's able to maintain control of that block with his inside arm, recenter his balance, and stay with that. Now, the interesting thing with Darisaw is I've seen him make some minor changes uh, to his stance when you watch his, his 20 tape. He's still got that arm resting on that thigh pad, but his lower half isn't quite as low. It's not like sat back in a chair as like we saw before. He's got that weight distributed on that inside leg. I think this might be a little bit more of a, and his stagger is a little bit di different too. I think this might actually like help him out of his stance a little quicker because if you just like watch um, his initial like kick step, I think it allows for a little bit quicker of a weight transfer and I think it helps him like a little bit earlier in his set so I, I was just more like interested because you can see some variations in like the overall like stance and his stagger um if you just kind of like watch him over time and i just found that interesting here's a kill shot actually you see it better on this angle All right, interesting play here against Allen. Allen plays, uh, Zach Allen plays in a lot of like head up alignments uh, and he's pretty light on his hands, which is like, it's almost a an approach that like Quinn Williams used when he was playing nose tackle his last year at Alabama because it like allows you to like re blocks a little bit better and be a little bit more patient out of your stance and power, players who are powerful can do this. Smart, powerful players can like, Play this kind of style but from Darasaw's point of view i think you have an idea of like these plays will reveal how much control you have of the block overall i think if you just watch what who miami brings where they bring them from on um, these like stunts and games this specific play i don't know if there's like fully a right answer for the offense here because You're gonna have every you're gonna have every rusher occupied. Darisaw dealing with the immediate outside threat. He gets so far upfield, widens Darisaw out. The guard looks like he's looking back inside. There's not gonna be this pass off here, 
kind of just based on the dynamics of when people are coming, where they're coming from. So I think that this specific play, they didn't really show this look. I, I, I think that's just like harder for an offensive line. And they get the sack there. In terms of a minor tendency with Derrissaw, I'm not sure how well he's going to face against certain types of speed rushers in every situation. Um, his feet definitely got better in his 20 tape, and part of that is he just plays a bit more measured. It's how he plays his sets, but I think his actual like functional athleticism got better too. Um, Roche is going to go with like this like inside-outside move. I think he has a tendency like, all right, let me get my punch in. The feet aren't fully following, and... You only really see this in like certain reps and he's a good functional athlete, but he doesn't have these like ridiculously like recovery traits like related to his footwork. The best thing about Derisaw is that like he's got like all these movement skills um, for like a pretty bigger, like a bigger tackle and like the way that he's built allows him to do different things. But I think against some of these like speed rusher types. Um, I think you can, like, what this move, like, intends to do is we, as we talked about, like, it, it, it can take a little bit of advantage of the feet. And he pushes him past the pocket, and Phillips is there to, to clean up for the sack. Um, but I give the, I, I give the nod to Roche on this one in terms of, like, the overall positioning that he gets there. Because if you have a, if you have a speed rusher who is, like, really good at cornering, um, I would want Derisaw to have, like, a little bit more depth so he could play this a little bit more head up. And you wonder a little bit uh, about the feet, just translating to certain types of players. I've heard certain people describe him as low burn. I see some of those examples on this tape. Um, I think Lance Zerline mentioned that about him. Where he's like a calculated finisher. But there's like a, a gray area between you just don't finish, you don't like to finish, or you're just going to do it when a when an opponent is in a position of like weakness. So the second level defender is getting turned around. And he's going to ride out that block. A lot of times he is very contentious. Like, all right, let me get my seal. And he's not super interested in like getting extra displacement, which some people would be like, fine, who really cares? The more displacement you can get at the, at the second level that does screw up the linebackers that does help out some of the angles for your overall blocking scheme and, and the choices that the back has. It's also just a mentality thing. Because you're going to see it here. But this is one of the exceptions. He doesn't always do this. Just a minor detail here. Because like his overall block is like. It's going to be fine. It's backside run. Backside QV keep. But backside of just the direction of the play. The only thing is. I don't see any refs blowing that whistle. Even if they did, you will never see a player like Tevin Jenkins. Like when we talk about like a finishing mindset, look back. Even to kind of see where things are. I think like true finishers, they don't really care about that. So just a minor detail. Sometimes he will look at the pole to kind of be like, all right, do I have to keep blocking? It's just something you're balancing because he's also like a pretty aware player. And so like while there are like some finishing questions with him, I think in some of these situations, like when I go back over my notes a second time, it's clearly like once he realizes, all right, like direction of the play, I don't want to get this holding call refs right here. Obvious retraction of the hands. That's purposeful. Now, I think there are reps where it's like not... You see the effort, but it's not in relation to, like, avoiding a penalty. This is a tie game, goal line situation. And it's just, like, there's, like, a... It's just, like, lackadaisical. Like, there's not an urgency to get up to that second level. And I know this is a backside block. But it seems like he's just fine with that. And I... Because his upside at tackle, I think, is definitely higher than a player like Tevin Jenkins. But as I think about Jenkins more, I'm going back and forth between who I'd rather have, Darisar or Jenkins. And Jenkins has the guard versatility. But their demeanors are just different. Now, talent-wise, Darisar's got him when you're actually projecting right to um, the tackle position. 
but this is like the number one example I could find of like, is he a low burn player? Now there's a couple of films that we didn't go over here, but I a lot of the points are pretty redundant there. Pretty much ones I'm already making right here. Uh, I think I think in these games you can you can kind of get a feel for who Darasaw is. You might want him to approach his sets differently. And the thing is, like, their offense is like pretty much like a quick game. It's just like they just work the short areas of the field a lot. And so I think Darasaw might also know that, like, he's working with a faster clock. And so that might contribute a little bit to, like, his his overall, like, tendency to play, like, more um, inside out in the passing game. And a little too much at times. So you'd want to see, like, how does he adjust to it. Now, there are, like, like he doesn't have, like, ridiculously light and quick feet. And he can be a little bit overconfident in his punch. And if his punch doesn't land, he doesn't have, like, the, the same... Uh, he doesn't put himself in like the same position that Slater does where Slater's going to make you work through him like every single part of him if you're going to win a rep. With Darasov, you can disengage his hands. I think you can have like a little bit of an easier time working that outside arc. Darasov's going to be between a late one. He's within like my second tier of offensive tackles. Um, still have not done Elijah Vera Tucker. And I think I'm, I think I'm going to bump up Tevin Jenkins a little bit at, after kind of like thinking of thinking about that looking back through the notes uh just the type of power that jenkins has and the potential to tap into even more if he starts to activate his lower body his power potential is pretty so high uh, but darasaw has got a lot of traits of a franchise left tackle he has pro bowl potential if he can continue on that upward arc you wonder how much better of an athlete he can get because it is very interesting why he became uh, a more functional more coordinated athlete in his 2020 season He's probably going to be anywhere from like 17 to 26, which is either an early, or it's either a late round one or an early round two. I've got a little freedom based on how I want to interpret some of the flaws that I find in his game. And, you know, tape is subjective, so you can, you can watch a lot of it, but trying to get insights into why a player does something. Um, I think there's things that he could adjust in a set, but if he does, look out, because this, this guy's got a lot of talent I like him more than a lot of the other guys like Cosme the the Eichenberg uh, the Jalen May I, I don't get the hype on Jalen Mayfield I guess some people do but thank you guys so much for watching I really appreciate a lot of the support for the channel we're gonna be kicking this into like high gear pretty soon in terms of like the videos that I can get out stay tuned for more stuff let me know who you want to see and subscribe